This show is taking a sort of sad turn. <laughs> it's dark, man. It's pretty dark. We need you, Thors. Thors, come back. We need a light in the darkness. And I don't think it's going to be Thorfinn yet. <laughs> Not for quite some time. And you're going to make me rewatch this. Sorry for not killing you correctly, friend. Ah, oh, God, it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad when you desire someone that much or like love someone that much and it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter unilaterally. It was all that energy spent for nothing? Was it all just a loss? Did it have any meaning at all? Made even sadder by the fact that those were his final moments. So that's just it. There's not even anything to hope for. Except for Valhalla. But she will surely go! Dying is the ultimate warrior. Just another uh, slow-paced episode of Inland Saga where nothing happens. <laughs> awesome. Uh, this show continues to surprise me. I never, I can't predict it, honestly. I can't predict it. I mean, I, there's one thing I can predict. Everyone is going to hell. <laughs> Everyone is creating a hell that they are living in. Part of the thrill is wondering if anyone can get out of this unscathed, or unscathed is not the right word, but get out of it with something, you know, something beautiful. Can we make it to Vinland? Whatever Vinland actually is. The Vinland in our hearts and minds. Episode 22, Lone Wolf. You know what's so bizarre is as much as I think a lot of the characters are just snakes and treacherous, I'm so attached to them, I don't want any of them to die. It's one of the genius of this show. Yeah, I, you know, you want to believe that that affected Asklad in some way, right? You just hope. You hope for his humanity, even if it's just a glimmer. I think Asklad is stronger, not physically, but just in his level of calm and experience. But he's sort of compromised right now. Well, he's less cluttered. That's how he wins every every time. It could be like a rock, pa rock, scissor, paper thing. <laughs> right. And in this kind of fight, it just takes a moment. You know, it just takes one moment. <laughs> what a conclusion to reach. The princess insults continue. Did he just toss away his sword? I mean, he, he never actually has used it against Thorfinn, really. Or he's never, like, hit him with it. I don't think. The ultimate insult, which is exactly his game plan every time, and Thorfinn never learns. There's like this one critical lesson he just can't can't get to, which is the mental game. Right. He just keeps getting played. <laughs> oh! A warrior may not need his sword, but he, he can definitely use his head. Damn! That sure you can not. <laughs> this is a beating. This is a ass pounding. Do we even know anymore? Does Thorfinn even know anymore? If you're, if you're confused, that's okay. I think everyone is, including Thorfinn. As to why this keeps going on. Something's got to break in, in Thorfinn. Man, that's such a complex character. I don't even know what to think. I don't know what to believe about what he says about his feelings. I mean, I knew he wouldn't do that, though. What was left to continue? <laughs> He's basically dead. Maybe it's time to reevaluate life, you know? <laughs> time to take some stock. It's not working this way. You were sleeping during the death blow. Or just do something else. I don't know. Right, right. It's not physical ineptitude. He's physically superior to Asklad at this point. I like how he's telling him the, the method to defeat him. That is amazing and also infuriating for Thorfinn. I'm disappointed in people's inability to kill me. That was such a sad shot to turn his dead body. <laughs> None of you are worthy of reading Camelot. Damn, what a backstory. What an origin. 
This is a death wish in part. This is a subconscious death wish from Asklad. Asklad keeps delivering the, the hits, man. He's so cool. Every time I think I understand him, he just gets deeper. How can such a terrible person be this awesome? There's something so gripping about that. I think he's one of the best bad characters I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm guessing Asklad is not talking about killing them with kindness either. Right. Ooh, backstory. Backstory. I'm here for it. Is this dad? Just walks in with a head, huh? <laughs> what a roster. I like two out of three of those things that I know of. This is sort of reminiscent of, uh, damn, who was it? Was it Reiner? I think it was Reiner. I see greatness runs in the family. Yeah, as a kid like that in that state, you definitely would need a hero to believe in. But when is the hero coming? Why not you? Why not me? Ask Lad. It's just another Vinland. So many Vinlands. Oh, but when? I'm so tired of waiting. When is the hero coming? Why would he come to this hell? Oh, no. There have been so many evil things in this show. This is up there. Wow, this is so amazing. Oh! Oh, and he missed! Wow, it was his first time fighting. It's a natural. So heart wrenching. Can't imagine the frustration. Oh, it's... oh, it's like Thorfinn and Asclad. Does Thorfinn remind him of himself? He's repeating his history. His father also was teaching him how to how to kill him. And he fit in with the group. Did he ever give him a name, though? <laughs> he did what Thorfinn hasn't done yet. Oh, that's a chilling laugh. Is that what Arturias would have done, though? Oh, he took them both out with one swing. The hero has returned from Camelot or wherever. You're not going to remove evil from the world through killing. I mean, he knows he's bad, right? I mean, he knows this isn't it. It's just he's not satisfied with not doing anything. He's not just gonna wait. <laughs> oh, it's like I think Aslan knows it'll happen eventually. It's a super important lesson coming from a very bizarre source. You've been used... a lot. Like, used a whole lot. 
Oh man, he's really trying to sort it up now. That was just spiteful. He's just proving his own point more. Still hasn't learned. You're probably very concussed. This is so crazy, and it's so cool. There's just so many big things building that I feel like I can't quite grasp it all yet. But Asclad's speech is something that it rings a familiar bell that I think the series has done a really great job building up to this point. I mean, these people are living on hell on earth, basically. It's a tough world. That's an understatement. But they're human beings and they have dreams. You know, they have dreams of something better and escaping this life. I mean, I don't think any of them set out to be terrible, right? They're not like born evil. Although I think those people do actually exist. I don't think that's really what we're seeing. I think that the show does a really good job painting a convincing backstory for all of them. You know, they're, they're basically just starting out as kids with tough lives or not so tough lives in the case of Thorfinn, but then experience these intense tragedies that leave them unable to cope as, you know, no one would be able to cope at at, the, at that age, at these ages. It's all a result of their experiences as it is in life, typically, right? So there's this simultaneous thing that they all reach for, which is this idea of paradise, often contrasted with the will of God or some sort of divine or heavenly state or place or whatever it is. And they realize something that I think is true. I think that there's a there's part of this, there's part of all of these characters that's correct, which is that, as I've been saying since Avatar, one important thing to develop as a person is the idea that no one is coming. You know, there is no hero that's coming, or at least it's not guaranteed. And if they do come, it won't mean anything unless you're ready for it. I just met a friend of mine in Vietnam and he was telling me that all of his success was attributable to luck, you know, because he had met the right people. But talking to him, it was clear that it's it's his mind, you know, it's his mind that made him seek out these people, one, and his mind and his drive and his intense passion for detail and his general health and strength that made those people take an interest in him and therefore give him the opportunity, right? So there's a part of luck that's connected to preparedness or maybe just willingness. And I think it's such a powerful message because so much time can be lost waiting. I think I spent a lot of time thinking that I would just drift, right? And that at, certain, at a certain point, someone or something would come along that would make the difficult work of finding meaning myself effortless and simple and easy. And I don't think that's ever... Maybe that's true for some people. I think it's not something to be counted on. Speaking of everything being circumstance and the role of choice, I think really the key distinction in, in whether or not humans have autonomy is whether or not they can reach the point where they realize the life is in their own hands. From that point on, anything is possible. Before that point, you're sort of just at the whim of circumstance, which is why I think that the message and the idea of free agency and personal responsibility is so important to deliver because the more that's widespread as a message, the faster people can can get that on some level and the faster their journey to awakening and therefore actively pursuing the lives they want in a meaningful way is possible. That's why I'll, I'll typically always advocate for personal responsibility over the things one has control over at least, which is very separate from blame. And also the truth, you know, getting to the truth of what life is and how it can be reckoned with. But the characters in this show, they start off with that, but then they kind of go to an extreme where it's that, but it's mixed in with this deep resentment for the world and sort of a tacit acceptance of the idea that if there is badness, then that is just a default of the world. And it's something that you can tap into for making your own dreams a reality. I mean, Asclad's story is so great. It's so convincing because he's talking about this great hero coming to save them. And He's tired of waiting for this hero to arrive and who can blame him? And so he's making things in his own hands like Canute has decided to do. And you could make the case that the state they're in now is better than the state they were in because at least they're engaging with the world in a way that is conscious, but it's not fully realized. And in their way, they're contributing to the same hell that they hate. They're creating a new hell for others to escape the hell that they so far have experienced. And the only person to get it right is Thor's and he's dead. He died for it, leaving the rest of the characters to sort of scramble to fill in that huge void. And that's why it had such an impact on them, probably, because they can't help but recognize on some level that it's more significant than them. It's bigger than them. At this point, I'm willing to believe the fact that Asclad would have made Thoris his leader just because finally a hero had emerged, right? But he didn't, and the world will be worse off for it until someone can finally fill those those huge, gigantic, heroic Jesus shoes. <laughs> you can always count on, uh, on Thoracle for the judgment. <laughs> Do you feel anything? Yeah, I have sort of the same question. I guess not. <laughs> Sounds like Asclad's face reading never lies. But Canute is not an ideal either. At least not yet. I, hope is not lost. It all depends on what he does from here on out. How able he is to, like, grow and think and reflect and adapt and recognize evil in all its forms, including his, himself. Speaking of reflecting, now would be a really great time 
to reflect and meet up with Leif Erikson, your more loving potential father. It's not going to be easy, though. It's going to be really painful. Really painful to grasp the fullness of what's happened. I mean, he's been putting it off for how many years? And he's just been adding to the pain. I don't envy him. I really don't envy... Thorfinn for having to reckon well with all of that. It's a lot. But I mean, if there's one thing I can say, better now than never. Or better now than, you know, in 20 years with this kind of continued evil again and again. He's still young, you know, he can never undo what he's done, but he can turn it around and do a lot of good. He has the power. He has the ability. He's in the right position. You know, he's with the you know potential and maybe future king. And he has someone to fall back on in Leaf. That episode was delightful agony for all of them. You know, it's hard not to feel pity for them despite, you know, the monsters that they are in the present. And I'm not even trying to judge them. Like, it's kind of terrifying, but I'm convinced I'm not any better than any of this. I just haven't been in these situations. Like, I think I have a certain amount of understanding. You know, I can abstract and think about things to a certain level, but it's different. You know, it's different when it's things that push you emotionally. And it's different when it's a matter of survival. It's different when there are things you, you care about that are ripped away from you or threatened. It's not easy, whatever your faith, right? I mean, people like Jesus in the world are revered for a reason. It's because as easy as it sounds on paper to be good and be loving and do the right thing, that is a whole journey in itself. And I think the path there is more painful than can be imagined. The pain that Thorfinn is going to go through is just a fraction of the pain he, will, he would have to go to become someone like Thor's. But you could also say that his life is going to be painful one way or the other. You know, pain is not a guarantee of wisdom. Pain and, and misfortune and misery can be wasted in the sense that nothing good is obtained. It just deepens the hole. But you just have hope, right? You just have hope that one of them, maybe Thorfinn, maybe even Canute, can find something in there that's worth being good for.